Good morning. So welcome to central London. When I say central, I am actually about to cross Oxford Street. Um, I've got to park the Vantage. Oh yes, welcome back to the Aston Martin Vantage. You see, there's an example straight away. Um, I normally have my mind so much in the game on cars that I get in and I go into car mode and I introduce what we're in. But today is the least dynamic environment in which to drive a sports car. It's, it's really funny, actually. The irony is London probably has the highest concentration of supercars in the whole of the UK, yet, its driving environment is definitely, without exception, the least conducive to driving a supercar. In fact, I would say it actually strips out all of the enjoyment from the purpose of said vehicle. Case in point, we've been, uh, what, moving all of 100 yards and I've been stuck longer than we have been moving. Anyway, not one to complain. Uh, gonna go park the Vantage and then I'm gonna be jetting off all around town. I am off to meet with a company called Jeeves and Hawks which is a 200 year old suitor. There's events coming up this year which I require a dapper suit for and Jeeves and Hawks are arguably the finest in the land on which to doff said body with fine materials. So I won't bore you by being sat in traffic much longer. Let's park at the Vantage, see where it takes us. I will say one thing about the Vantage is the surrounding environment is so high, the, ah, the dashboard's really high and the window line's quite high. The window line's not so much of a problem if I'm honest with you, only when you're getting tickets out. It's, it's a stretch, so that's really not the issue, but having such a high dashboard, when you um, come to navigate around pretty much anything you can't help but sort of elongate your neck over and above the dash just to see where the sort of wheel placement is <laughs> but that barbel on the overrun let's do this <laughs> but that barbel on the overrun more than makes up for it all right let's see if we can find a space it's a space that mercedes just came out bang on time Bang's not probably not the word to use when you're parking a, an Aston Martin in a very tight multi-story car park. <laughs> Perfect. Something else that's really great about this car, the boot is huge. Now I'm not sure if you watched my DB11 AMR video or not. Sorry, I'm just putting away a few bits and bobs. But I did say there's this weird conundrum with the DB11 AMR and the Vantage in that look at the size of that. So Aston tell me that you can easily fit two sets of golf clubs there and there. It's got this folding shelf here like this so you can secure bags on that side etc and also when the boot is down it sort of puts this blind spot so no one can actually see what's inside the boot but it's massive. The conundrum being the DB11 doesn't have anywhere near as much practicality as this car. Meaning, is this a better Grand Tourer? Arguably. Anyway, today's not hugely about cars, so let's try and navigate my way through London and uh, book an Uber. Uh, you know you're rolling when your address is number one, Savile Row. So I booked an appointment with a guy called John. I've never met this gent before, but I'm told on good authority that John's the man. Check it out. Since I left you stood the test of time like a leader It got too far and I will always linger You went away to feel the wind get a fitter It worked and I was on the verge looking back We had all the reasons to split And we made it final when it took forever The day John, how are you? How are you? Very well. Very well, thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you, James. How are you? Also, James. So, he's uh, exactly. 
Yeah, we're going to Italy, uh, mm -hmm. so I guess I need something lightish. Yeah. Um, I mean, as it happens, I've just landed from Zurich, and it was okay. like it was oddly like super super hot. Right. Like, all my stuff was sticking to me, and it was yeah, it was an odd one. So if we've got something light, yeah, we've we'll got some money. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, look, we we get set up in the bespoke. Yeah, we'll show you. Uh, Brilliant. Um, Thank you. Sort of chill out there. But this is incredible. Yeah, this is Tell me a bit about this. Place. This oh, is really? uh, this is my room. So um, I'm the military manager. I make to measure. So wow. uh, I have to look after the Queen's bodyguards, um, and that is I mean, that's what a role. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> so cool. <laughs> crazy, crazy job. Um, yeah. You've got hundred year old helmets um, that we need to fit uh, to like in modern day people. Um, yeah, you know, they, they are all retired from the army, okay. uh, and they actually elect themselves. They go into a, a proper interview. Um, and wow. they they will be doing this for twenty years. Um, yeah, so we we um, have a royal warrant. So we've got the Queen's royal warrant over there, uh, and that's because yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. one of one of many. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've been outfitting these gentlemen. Wow. The, the official term is the Honourable Court of the Gentlemen at Arms, wow. um, and they are known as the nearest guard to the Queen. So when there's a ceremony or wow. anything like that, these guys are there, all in uniforms, plumes and all, axes. There's an axe down there at the bottom, swords. That's um, just a I mean, early rifle. I can get over the intricacy on these helmets and mm. out of this world, yeah, isn't the it? The filigree is unbelievable. Wow. It's all hand hammered. And, and you so can tell the age as well because some of them are queen's crowns and king's crowns. So you okay, kind of wow. you an yeah, idea yeah, of course. how far back they go. Um, and you've got, so some boots here look fairly new and some are pretty old school. They're, that's the only part that is their own. Okay. Um, so they, they, we polish them. <laughs> so it's our job. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they they they're from their old service days and things. So they're retired. Oh, so they're from fifty to seventy. Okay. And um, when they retire, yeah. they can elect to do part of this. And they're super high ranking. They're all major and above. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Wow. Um, and we make them bespoke downstairs in the cutting room. Um, and each, luckily enough, the, you know, each one gets a uniform, which is kind of upwards worth up to like ten thousand pounds. You know, all of this of gold is all real, it's all hand it's hand really? sewn. Yeah, it's all hand sewn. Um, you know, it's uh, it's so intricate. Uh, they have big efforts as well. We take them off the uniforms because they actually stretch the uniforms uh, and they're so heavy. Um, but yeah, they have big gold efforts as well, yeah. I walked it up here and I was like taken aback because I didn't expect them in this room. Yeah. It's just steeped yeah. in history. Yeah, yeah. it's two hundred okay. years from that side all the way across. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And I've never felt so <laughs> underdressed in all my life. And this, believe it or not, was our first ever royal warrant from George III. So you can see that the certificate changes a little bit <laughs> as time goes on. What um, an unbelievable route. All handwritten on vellum, you know, absolutely incredible. But the thing that's going to blow your mind the most is this one here is uh, a letter from Lord Nelson himself. No, it isn't. Yeah. I mean, where'd you go about finding that? Yeah. <laughs> well, what we need in here, guys, uh, is a letter from Lord Nelson. <laughs> Archivist goes, yeah, yeah, we've got yeah, that. Sure, we've got that. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, Are these all sort of vacuum sealed? No, actually, yeah. Uh, no. It's just. It's just over. Okay, cool. Kind of lockdown, but yeah. It's, um... But for people to come here, knowing that you guys do this, they're almost becoming part of something steeped in this. Incredible. That's yeah. cool. Bit of that tour, like sort of the nineteen eighties, yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, kind of went past the limousine and was like, I need something from the shop. You know, I need, I need to go. Yeah. Um, and then Mr. Gee went to go and see him at uh, Savoy um, on the Strand and then that kind of wow. talking that through what he could do, how could he make it look military, Yes. how could you not offend any of the military or anything of like course, that, you yeah, can't, yeah. can't do a uniform, no, so that's it. it was a really interesting uh, kind of time. This uh, is iconic outfit. Yeah, 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 that is. Um, wow. All hand embroidered, bespoke made it. Yeah. And all that stage dancing around to me. Yeah. He was like superhuman. <laughs> Everything that's out at the moment is all going to be seasonal pieces. Right. So they're all going to be okay. very lightweight and very comfortable. Sure. Yeah. But luckily you've come at a good time. Uh -huh. so, so pretty much there's not really anything that, you could, that you're going to pick that's going right. to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You won't work. Well, well like ideal. maybe one cashmere jacket we have. Do you know what? I am partial to a pink shirt. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you can't go wrong. That is nice. It's a crisp pink shirt, <laughs> yeah. I'm already spoiled yeah, for choice. Really spoiled I'm already spoiled for choice. Spoiled for choice. <laughs> Wow. 
So, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know I'm more of a sort of casual jackets and sneakers kind of guy. To come here and do this, it's not a world that I'm actually that familiar with. I rarely come and get something fitted out. However, there are a few events coming out this season. There's a Rolls Royce event happening, then I'm going out to America for Pebble Beach and Quail. First time attending last year, and I realized that it was very smart, and I was there and I was pretty casual and actually felt a bit out of place. So the idea is that this suit hopefully will be multi-purpose throughout the next few months. So if we can nail it with this one style, then hopefully I won't have to take too many clothes with me because when I'm traveling, my suitcase is always packed anyway. So if we can get this one nailed, then it'll do for all of the events this year. That's the idea. Right? Okay, I'm not sure you could get any more of a quintessential London day. We're now leaving Jeeves and Hawks, or Geeves and Hawks, as uh, I've been told it's correctly pronounced. What an incredible building. Um, I never in a million years expected, first of all, that place to be so big. Um, architecturally stunning, but that room upstairs with all the royal regalia in, absolutely. Honestly, I just didn't expect it, so when I walked in there, I was genuinely taken aback. The whole thing is steeped in history. Going there came off the back of a friend of mine who used to work for GQ. He was like, look, go down there, the team will sort you out. And I'm so glad I did, it was stunning. Now we're um, in the black cab and we're gonna go pick up the Vantage. <laughs> And I'm back. Collected bag from where I stayed. Now, you're probably wondering, where's the suit? Um, nature of the game, suit has to be fitted to me. So you're not gonna see that just yet. But there's multiple events that this thing is coming out for. And now it's time to drive myself back home in the Vantage. Next video, we're going to Le Mans. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.